traditionally the fever of a multi-sport competition, especially the Southeast Asian Games, is very much dependent on how the national team's football side does. And in Kuala Lumpur 2017, the Malaysian under-22 squad have responded by being the only team with a 100% record going into the final four. Football semi-finals, as coach Om Kim Sui has said, it's the gold medal that every team wants to win. It's a tournament that gathers the biggest crowds. If the fans turn up and do their part, we will do ours. Well, Mr. Ong, the fans have done their part because it's a Shah Alam Stadium that's packed to its rafters this evening. And now it's the turn of his boys to do their part by qualifying for the finals for the first time since they won the competition in 2011. an atmosphere here at the Shalom Stadium. You can tell already the emotions 
that have been poured out just by the national anthem alone. Well, these players, a lot of them have not been playing in front of a sellout crowd like the one we have here at the Charlotte. After those emotions, uh, they have to try to keep it in check because there is still a football match to be played. An important one as well for the right to meet Thailand in the final of the SEA Games Tournament 2017. The semi-final pairings couldn't have been more appetizing. Thailand already beating bitter rivals Myanmar by a last-minute goal to nil. And now it's the Malaysians' turn to play their bitter rivals, Indonesia, for a place against the defending champions in a couple of days from now. There is the Malaysian squad, who are the only team with a 100% record in this tournament. They did start off with a little bit of a hiccup the same way the Indonesians did in drawing against the Thais. They drew against the Vietnamese as well, but with the Thais beating the Vietnamese on the final day in itself, it meant that they qualified after winning 2-0 against Cambodia. They have turned up to the Indonesians, making the trip to KL to support a lot of their athletes, and a lot of it has been their footballers who they hope would do a much better job than their 2015 side who got to the semi-finals before collapsing in the last four losing to Thailand 5-0 in the semi-finals and then to Vietnam by five goals to nil the last tournament in 2015 was the first time in three tournaments that Malaysia did not make it through the good group stages this is the Malaysian starting lineup which features of course Ed Tanabalan a striker that came into this tournament in doubt and you can understand why they were sweating over his fitness because he has delivered with three very important goals the winner against Singapore and two against Myanmar well, the substitutes include a number 11, Jaffrey Fidaus Chu, and he's called upon. He knows the way to goal against the Indonesians. He scored against them already in their last two meetings. Ong Kim Sui in charge of his fourth SEA Games. No one has had more SEA Games tournaments as coach of Malaysia. So he is there, and this is his 23rd SEA Games match as coach of Malaysia in this tournament. The Indonesian starting lineup picks itself, and they've got Septuan. Olana, the number 29, who is the top scorer of the team, and also look out for number 10, Ezra Walian, part of the Ajax youth squad. Luis Miller, as experienced as they come, former coach of the Spain under-21 side and also coach of the Spanish squad at the 2012 Olympic Games. He is now the Indonesian coach, not just of the under-23s, but also of the national team. and you could almost hear a pin drop that's brilliantly observed by a pair of fans who can get pretty rowdy Indonesia versus Malaysia the 16th meeting between these two sides and since it's been turned into an under 23 tournament Malaysia have never lost to the Indonesians the last two times these sides met were for medals in football the semi-final for 2013 where it was one all and then Indonesia triumphed on penalties on the way to silver. In 2011 it was for the goal, the final, which was a one all draw and Malaysia winning goal after winning in a penalty shootout. No team has lost to more semi-finals of the SEA Games than Indonesia. And for the Malaysians, in their past four meetings against the Indonesians, they've never scored more than one goal. But one goal could be enough. However, they have to watch. The defense has been leaky so far in the tournament. They have been scoring goals for fun. What they haven't been able to do, though, is keep a clean sheet, of which the Indonesians have already kept a two. 
en route to final. That was against the Philippines, Cambodia and Vietnam. Three in fact. The game gets underway with the Indonesians in red. Malaysians in an almost 3-5-2 formation. In fact, both these squads playing with three centre-backs. So the formations almost cancelling each other out and hopefully they don't cancel each other out on the pitch because uh, the crowd and the atmosphere that they've created here at the Shah Alam Stadium certainly deserves more than that. Shamir Amirkuti gets his first touch in the ball game, so too does Irfan Zakaria. Adib Zainuddin, the captain. These very big Malaysian centre-backs, all 1.8 metres and above. And uh, in the first 10 minutes of uh, these matches, featuring these two sides, we do expect to it to be a little scrappy. They met each other at the AFC Under-22 qualifications. Malaysia winning that game in Bangkok by three goals to nil. Three goals were scored in the opening 30 minutes of it. And it prompted the Indonesian coach, Nila, to actually say they need to be a little more disciplined in terms of defending their goal in the early stages before going for broke in the second half, but not to throw every player forward. Speaking of throwing players forward, that was one that was won very quickly by Shafiq Ishak. Franklin tackle at the end coming in from Kutukere. Early touch for Kumaran. Malaysian players up front have got a lot of pace with Kumaran especially. And this is the star player for the Malaysian Safawi. Trying to look for the angle for the cross. It wasn't a bad cross either. Under pressure. Almost didn't find that angle. But somehow managing to dink it over. And the goalkeeper Satya Tama will be happy that he came out to claim. And claimed successfully. It was through his mistake of the opening game against Thailand. Where he came out and totally missed the ball altogether. And because of that the Thai scored the opening goal. And that was uh, Indonesia's first game of their Sea Games campaign. Well, they've recovered from that. And so too it seems. Satria Hongkin Sui has already noted it down that set pieces might be the route to go for the Malaysians because the Indonesians do not defend it pretty well. And that wasn't a set piece, but it was a cross put inside the box, which asked uh, some questions about the Indonesian defense. Kumaran, who looked gingerly during the warm ups, I don't know whether he's 100%. He wasn't 100% coming into this tournament. Neither was Tanabalan. He was uh, injured during training when the squad got together. Ankin Sui selected 26 before trimming the squad down to 23 for this tournament. And Tanabalan was injured. But uh, the physio said that he would be good enough to start. And because of that, he has been kept in the team. And he has responded with those uh, three very important goals came on in the second half to devastating effect against Singapore where he scored the winner in that game and then again uh, Myanmar of course those two goals priceless uh, ensuring that they top the group and avoid meeting Thailand it's an early touch there for Septiana Olana who's uh, scored the opening two goals for the Indonesians in this Sea Games those are the only goals that he's got in the tournament cleverly worked away Skipping away from the marker then was Pedri. Rizaldi. Nusa. Both these sides are employing very high presses. And it's very much the fashion of football these days, isn't it? Ankim Sui is always very vocal on the touchline, but even though he might be losing his voice in this match, I don't think the players will be able to hear him. It's hardly audible here at the Charlotte Stadium. Rizaldi. So very difficult to attack down this Malaysian right hand side, especially with Matthew Davis, the right wing back. However, if it's uh, one of those days where he feels a little more ambitious and more adventurous, it might be the opportunity for them. The breakthrough is on for the Indonesians if they can keep the ball in play. They do keep the ball in play. The cross goes a little bit too deep. Yanis Roni having to use Gade all the way back. Happy to just keep ball with even Dimas. Here's Rizaldi. You've seen a lot of action in the opening minutes of this match. Febri. Still Febri. Those Indonesian white players are very quick. 
Febri Hariadi in the Gabezroni, who is chasing after this loose ball. Side by side with uh, Samir Abekuti. Once again, they free up a Safawi Rasid. Still Safawi. Brilliant turn inside. Always wanted it on his left foot, though. The cross is good enough. It should have been the opening goal. Somehow Indonesia escape. And Tanabahan misses an open goal, but it would have been offside anyway. But uh, with a rich vein of form that he's brought into the semi-final, it should have been a header on target at least. Magnificent work once again by the 2016 Malaysian Super League Young Player of the Year, Safawi Rasid. Once again, a teasing cross, just hanging it up in the air, allowing Tanabahan to attack it. He's deceptively very strong in the year, the Malaysian number 12. And he should have put it on target at least, but he totally misjudged and mistimed this jump. In Malaysia, with the opening roar in this match. Well, we might not see Matthew Davies as adventurous as he has been throughout this tournament, only because the Malaysian wingbacks have to be a bit more disciplined defensively against the Indonesians, where they bomb forward and use the pace of... Uh, Yamas Roni and Febri, they are a frightening sight. Malaysia to ask for a free kick on No Azam. The referee says no, No Azam picks up the ball, and this time he does get the call by the Sri Lankan referee. Just a goal in this tournament against Singapore, but uh, we talk about a game changer. Started from the substitute bench against Singapore. They were trailing by Bolton L. He came on and he started controlling and dictating matches from the middle of the park. And then all of a sudden, snapshot one all. And the Malaysians had their tails up. Just as they do in the opening minutes of this half. The crowd sends something special here from this free kick. Irfan Zakaria. Another header won by the Malaysians. Well, this time it actually came off the Indonesians. And it's gone out for a corner. Kumaran is usually the speedster in the Malaysian squad, but trying to mix himself up and getting himself muscled in and muscled out by the Indonesians at the expense of a corner. The first of the match, hit a one in the year by Andy Setio. They have settled into this game faster than the Indonesians. And this is where they must try to profit, as their coach has asked. Delivery wasn't too bad, just a little bit more elevation and it would have gone right into the heart of that weak spot of the Indonesian defense. Kumaran, oh, he's tripped rather badly as well, clipped on the ankle. He's okay now and gets right up. It's another one of those players where they're sweating on his fitness before the start of this campaign. That's Kumaran. So, Shamir Kutiaba from Penang. Kumaran's teammate as we reach past the eight minute mark and the Malaysian supporters know that their squad has built on the momentum created from that 100% winning record in the group stages and have started the semi-final on fire. Kumaran, the Shamir actually, Shamir Abukuti trying to free up Kumaran or Tanabalan. Shamir yet again they very much better and a better well-rounded side in terms of Shamir and the team because it does free up number eight, not Aslam Azim, to play the quarterback role and distribute playing creative director in the Malaysian squad rather than him protecting the defense, which he did in that first game against Brunei where they just limped to a 2-1 victory. And then came a 2-1 victory against Singapore, which was achieved by coming from behind, coming from a deficit at half-time. That was when the few good factors started coming in, and the crowd started coming in for their matches. They beat Myanmar by three goals to one, and then their final match against Laos. Really, it was uh, a chance to play some of the reserves and make sure that players who are on a yellow card would not get suspended for the semi-final. They still won that one, though, by three goals to one to make it through to the stage. 16th meeting between these sides. Malaysia have got the better of the record. Six wins to Indonesia's four. And 
And don't be surprised if this one goes all the way past the 90 minutes too, because Indonesia have been involved in more extra time matches than any other side in the history of the Sea Games. And they will be buoyed by the fact that at the Sea Games they have kept more clean sheets against Malaysia than any other team. The period of the 1990s, with four games in a row, the Malaysians failed to score against the Indonesians. Only accepted into the Sea Games in 1977, remember Indonesia? And their first football match was against Malaysia in the city. A game which they won by two goals to one. And then that famous 1979 tournament when they hosted, they drew with Malaysia 0-0 in the group stages. And then in the finals, Malaysia beat them by a Mokhtar Dahari goal to nil. That Malaysian team in the 1970s was pretty special. Qualifying, of course, for the Olympic Games before. Association decided to boycott the balls put right through. Goalkeeper had to be alert and he was that time. Hazard Mazzani, in fact, he had gone right off his line already knowing that uh, they were always going to exploit the pace of Yabez Roni down the right-hand side. And whenever Roni gets his skates on, puts those wheels on heels, is always unstoppable. the dirty stuff what you like to call the nitty-gritty the water carrier as a uh, certain Eric Cantona has described in the team the ball's broken clear for Matthew Davies not one of his better crosses though he is usually so lethal on his deliveries the Australian born Malaysian and this time huge error this time from uh, Febri Periadi totally unnecessary I know it's on his weaker right foot but still just had to get some sort of contact on the ball and not allow it to score and pass him the way that did and Davies wouldn't have had that free run on goal well after a fast and furious opening by the Malaysian squad the Indonesian team would be pretty happy with the fact that uh, nothing came out of it they didn't really profit from it they still kept it at nil nil They've still managed to maintain their discipline because at the AFC qualifiers, under 23 qualifiers at this stage, they're already training by two goals to nil. Midfield battle though has been won by Malaysia at the moment, especially Shamir Abdelkuti. Chance to go on board now for Rizaldi. It's a clever ball put inside. Huge punch, Robbie. It was on target, but there are three on the line for the Malaysians. Always prepared. And it really had to be flown right into the back of the net for that to have any chance of going in. Here is Yanis Lobe trying to put Ezra Walian through. And now the Malaysians break with Shawan, looking as always uh, to look for the trickery of Safawi. Still bombing forward, galloping. Shazwan, Safawi already delivered. Two very good crosses that time, tried to angle it for the head of Kumaran. It was Tanabalan actually, who was hunting once again at the far post. So far, so good and comfortable for goalkeeper Sabji Atama. Septian, we've hardly seen him on the ball at all. Player who scored three goals for the under 23 this year already, Septian Malana. A lot of times, uh, coach has uh, decided to put him as the main striker, Udam Dima, so that's what he brings to the team the energy, the legs. Uh, Septian works the angle pretty well with some quick feet and quick movement, but that's all it was. The shot though was stuffed. Control was absolutely superb. That right foot are filled with beanbags, just magnetizing the ball. Uh, cross was a bad either from Ramis and the Indonesia get that first corner. Or has a corner up for a throw. Alert from Irfan. I think it has gone up for a throw. Very, very alert. Knew that uh, his captain Adip was struggling. He trying to get back to cover out the space and the angle for Ezra Walien. 
Shamira Bikuti, who has been making sure that his defense does as little work as possible once again, cutting the supply line out and winning the header. Much better spell this one for Indonesia, at least they have possession of the ball and they're penetrating this Malaysian defensive third. Rizaldi Ranusa. Once again, a very good delivery, not a very good clearance by Shawan. Yanis, this time, lost out on the control. That earlier opportunity was a more difficult one, surprisingly, for uh, Yanis Robbie to take the ball down, but he did. You know, when it comes to the easy touches, sometimes you do take your eye as office. Matthew Davies has played the Indonesians onside, and he's got a lot of defending to do and covering them. Fortunate enough that the stuff clearance is easily picked up and found his teammates, and which is Adit Zainuddin, who then gives the ball away. Some messy moments these for the Malaysians. The last five minutes or so, the Indonesians slowly trying to stamp their midfield authority. The Malaysians just uh, unable to deal with it. Just such a promising start to this game. Martin does well to keep the ball. Let's see what uh, No Aslamazin was trying to do because uh, well, actually it was uh, Kumaran who had made that one and dashed just behind the defense to free himself up. Marzen trying to hit that ball right through, but this was a huge, huge punch by the goalkeeper. Got rubber to rubber, and then had cover. And that shot came from Yanis. Penatli, who didn't start this tournament as first choice in the match against Brunei. But after appearing against Singapore, has kept his place. So, after going for a flurry of punches in the opening 10 minutes, these two sides now probably speed. Trying to quieten the game down on the part of the Indonesians trying to quiet the fans down. Again, they're trying to just make sure that uh, it's sparring more than the flurry. And those blows that have hit them in the opening few minutes when this man, Safiya Tamar, came out tops in terms of collecting those deep passes. Quick with all those 50 50 balls and second balls in midfield, especially Shamir Kutiyaba. Malaysians have been quicker than the Indonesians in terms of picking up those loose balls. Adib Davies is always making the pitch as wide as possible down the right hand side, and on the other side, Chaswan's gone on the run as well. On this side, too, just play it down right at the back, making use of Adam No Aslin. Striker for his club side, Salang over playing as a centre back for not just uh, the under 23s but uh, whenever he's called up because the Malaysian squad too. Ivan Dimas, what a star he is. Played at the last C games where he scored four goals, Ivan Dimas. They've always said that he was going to be a superstar. That's the reason why he is fully capped on the senior front. team's top scorer when they won the under-19 AFF championships in 2013. A tournament in which they met Malaysia and drew one all against them. Jaffrey Chu scoring the goal for Malaysia, he's on the bench. As a one young, it's always going to be powerful and always going to ensure that he uses that upper body strength of his inside the penalty box at that time though. And he's had to put a much better ball than the one that he found. Martin happy to take any sort of contact and win the free kick in a dangerous position. Rizaldi unnecessary. Martin was almost running into a cul-de-sac in an angle where he couldn't find anybody in the box and there was only going to be Tanabalan inside the box. So clever work then from Eskumaran. Set pieces. Work on it. Indonesians have been pretty unsure and indecisive. 
communication between goalkeeper and defenders has at times been non-existent in this tournament so take advantage of this says the coach and they have a quite fantastic opportunity here because this certainly suits the in-swinging left foot of Safawi Rasid he went for goal wasn't a million miles away it's, uh, for the players who've gone hunting inside the penalty box and <laughs> hanging their heads up and saying look uh, wasn't the tactic to try to just lift it up and find one of us what a player this boy is oh he must now plays for Johor Darul Taksin but uh, last year when he was playing for the TT he was just scoring goals for fun and that first goal he scored against Brunei in this tournament is probably still the goal of the tournament in the C game so far. Something volley executed with near perfection. Samir Gutiaba probably be the standout star of this first half. The way he has protected his defense. He won every midfield battle one on one against his Indonesian counterparts. For the referee to call Matthew Davis tripping up Febri Mariani. Febri's already scored one goal in this tournament that came against Cambodia in their previous match, which was played in this stadium, Shah Alam. He's just a little too impatient in trying to make sure that he won the ball back in a pitch that's as high up as possible. Halfway stage at this uh, first half. What started out as a flurry of activities and chances for the Malaysians, especially in the Indonesian defensive third. Still not managing a shot on target. Tanabalan really should have scored in the opening couple of minutes when he had a header in front of goal. She failed to connect cleanly. The same sort of start that uh, happened at the AFC under 23 qualifications in Tanabalan scored as early as the third minute of play in that game. It was Andy Safawi that scored as early as third minute. Safawi tried to set up Tanabalan to continue his rich scoring for Davies Azalazin wants the ball. He's the one who's always going to be the metronome. Going to keep the pattern and rhythm taking for the Malaysians, making sure the ball is moved from side to side. Their ploy throughout this tournament has been to try to switch flanks as soon as possible. As long as their wing backs make the pitch wide enough, there's always an opportunity for those balls to be flicked up and played wide out. But against the Indonesians, might be a different game altogether because uh, they're almost employing the same tactics, aren't they? using wing backs instead of full backs and because of that so that flank is always protected but a is the one who is protecting their right hand side it's onside it's pulled back and just slightly in front of walian malaysians escape but a clear indication in just that moment that this malaysian defense can be very fragile when it comes to players running in from behind with pace walian just slightly needed to stretch her hamstring but in order to get to the cross from septian Warning signs are there. This Indonesian side is lightning quick. And the Malaysians just cannot switch off. That's the reason why Shamir has been put in midfield to ensure that those fast runners are blocked out in the first place. Oh, that's a really bad foul on Kumaran. He's gone down screaming in pain and asking for the bench to come out for him straight away. It should be a yellow card because that's a horrendous challenge on Kumaran. Look at all oh, the knees just given way. I think that's it for the tournament for him. The knee, the ankle, and mostly the knee that's just totally given away from that challenge. Two-footer, it's just been shown on the big video board here, and the crowd do not appreciate that. The Zaldi it was. to try to completely maim and take out the tricky winner. The physio has already called to the bench and said, we need a substitution because this is pretty bad.
you saw from the way he fell and how the legs just gave way underneath him but it was a bad injury and he can't continue you do feel for Kumaran because he's had an injury play season playing for Penang came into this tournament actually injured in the last match against Penang and then a lot of people thought there won't be an opportunity for him at these sea games somehow he came on at half time in the second half against Brunei then started the match against Singapore and now he might finish the sea games campaign cheering his teammates on instead of trying to affect the game 2017 has been a painful year indeed for Kumara Jackie Chu signaled stripped ready to go as I said it's no slouch in terms of the replacement because Jaffrey Chu is a man who knows the, the way to goal against the Indonesians. He scored against them in the recent AFC qualifiers. He scored against them in the AFF Under-19 Championships too. He scored two goals in their last match against uh, Laos. So certainly not a bad replacement to have, not a bad substitute to call from the bench. If Ankin Sui is going with Jaffa, yes he is, he's ready to come on now for the very unlucky Kumaru. Indonesians trying to up the stakes now with some challenges. Have been flying in a little harder than it was in the opening 23 minutes of this game. Well, that one not as malicious as that tackle from Rizaldi. I'm surprised that Rizaldi didn't even get a yellow card for that challenge. Some referees might have given red because it was a two-footed challenge. It lunged straight into Kumaran. And it's forced the Indonesian player, a Malaysian player, to miss the rest of the tournament, most likely. So Jaffrey Chu comes on. The 2016 AFC Under-19 top scorer for the Malaysians. 2016 AFF under 19 top scorer as I said it's not a bad replacement to bring on a player who knows the way to go against this Indonesian squad who can see the corner we've seen the words impact sub used so many times but uh, this would be some sort of impact sub if he can get his head to the ball Goal with his first touch. Safawi Rasid, the man was perhaps the most cultured left foot in this tournament, takes this corner. Fortunate because that was a brilliant delivery. As Tanabalan tried to outfox this uh, Indonesian defense. Strike as good as the last uh, delivery would suffice. It's just as good. The goalkeeper had to scramble to get it away. You can almost put a bucket, and he would have found two with those two deliveries. That time, it almost found the back of the net. Well, if he didn't claw that away, Satria, it was either going to be a goal direct from the corner or an easy tap-in for Tanabalan. The Indonesians have upped the stakes in terms of the challenges and Malaysia have responded in the way they know how. Set-piece once again, brilliant save by the goalkeeper. What a magnificent save by the much maligned Satria Tama. Well, the moment you step up the scrappy part of the game, that's what usually happens. And we did talk about impact subs. It almost was an immediate impact by Joffrey. His first touch, a volley which was arrowing into the top corner until that intervention from the goalkeeper.
It was placement more than power from Jaffrey Chu. And maybe power would have defeated Satya Tama, but still cat-like reflexes were required and Satria who has been criticized heavily in this tournament for his indecisions and in coming out to collect crosses shows us why he is still the number one choice because that was sprung and kept out started as being for Ong Kim Sui. The team looked pensive against Brunei, but the moment they got that victory against Singapore, it just have been a different class and gear altogether in this tournament. All he had to do was play it square at the back and keep it. Dimas. He will be composed, Ivan Dimas. Nothing is going to face him and nothing is going to get him to release the ball unnecessarily. The rest of his teammates though need to take a lead out of that composure and keep the ball much better and protect it a lot better than they have done. Shamir talk about protecting the ball. He has done a pretty good job of it in this game so far. Once the ball yet again from Irfan, he decides to use his goalkeeper Hazid and then Ali, the captain. A few moments that he's lost the challenge of the year, that time to Rizaldi. Febri. Indonesia have their own free kick in a very dangerous spot. Septian is managing to find a way past this uh, Malaysian defense. Chances have been pretty sporadic for the Indonesians in this match, so whenever they get one, they have to take advantage of it. And all of their best uh, situations have come from the boot of the 20, number 29, Septian Maulana. One of which across which was just missed by Ezra Walian, who's hardly had a touch of the ball the centre forward. But if that touch is going to be diverted past his goalkeeper, they wouldn't mind. Once again, they go for ball. The goalkeeper didn't look too convincing. Second time of Arsenal, he does collect the ball. And Safi has found himself free right now. Safawi, still Safawi. There's a player wide right outside. He couldn't find him, needed the pass to be hit much sooner. In the end, he went for ball himself. And that was a chance wasted. Safawi Rasid knows all about it. But a superb run had been made on the outside. Jaffrey Chu had taken it and drawn the defenders out. And all he had to do was to slip it in. The path to his teammate to go. He didn't. He left footed all the way. And sometimes instead of slipping that pass in you want to turn it right back and open your body up uh, to sue that left peg and take that shot at goal but, uh, that had to be hit a lot sooner because uh, his teammate had exploded and was just jet healing himself all the way to goal who well, had made that run earlier it was really the impact of uh, the fall more than the challenge from Septian that uh, has uh, caused uh, Azam to be winded. Well, he has been questioned, the Sri Lankan referee, over a couple of decisions, but you have to say, it, uh, except for allowing Rizaldi to get away with murder after that murderous challenge on uh, Kumara made all the right decisions so far with the aforementioned Rizaldi. Pace once again being used by February gets away too easily from Davies takes too long to pull that cross in though goes the ball all by himself <laughs> he has been pretty nervous in the opening minutes Hazik 
because of that cause a few hard flutters in the crowd too twice already the shots come straight at him and twice he's near two times before gathering the ball well, he needed to cradle it like uh, he does to his firstborn instead the ball just bounced right on his chest and almost given an opportunity for Septian to count Much of uh, Charles Wayne Kishak, the left wing back. Of the Malaysian attacks focus very much on the right hand side, and whenever it's switched down to the left, it's always Safawi who hangs on to the ball. Try to create something. Even Dimas managing to somehow throw the ball to a teammate despite the on rushing and very quick Tanabalan. It's the composure of Ivan Dimas. A couple of Spanish clubs actually inquired about him, had a stint there as well. Debri is very quick, but this time Malaysia had support coming back and defending. So nine minutes remaining of this first half, which has thrilled in spells. And it's uh, been a much better game than it was in the first semi-final where Thailand beat Myanmar by a last guess goal to nil. Septem, not the most convincing of headers from him. Good day much of him moving forward it's because he's had to keep a very close watch on Safawi to ensure that he doesn't cut inside and turn himself into an inverted winger Rizaldi easy decision yet again Matthew Davies has always wanted to win the ball high up enough because the moment this guy paces him and goes pace for pace Davies knows it's going to be a lost cause he's not going to beat him when it comes to the acceleration part of matters Every so Davies uh, trying to anticipate more than win it on the one on ones. Dimas Shamir has been outstanding in this match. To, to get anything around Dimas, you have to be a very special talent. Someone who tries to deny you time, but even Dimas is someone who's born with time on his side. He just somehow manages to find it every time he's on the pitch. Goalkeeper has got to be more convincing than his last two catches. He was. Isaac Dudley, just 19 years of age. Here's Azam. He too has been suffocated off the ball due to some very close defending being thrown in at him from Septian and Rizaldi. Rizaldi's missed this, Tana Balan's broken clear momentarily only for the sliding challenge to come right through. And a good one from Ricky Fondurin. Well, they've already lost one of their speedsters and strikers, Kumaran. The last thing they need is to lose their top striker and Tana Balan. To the quick fire start I'm sure the energy has been sapped out of the Malaysians as the intense intensity of their attacks just withered down a little bit at the end of this first half and seen as much of it as we saw in the opening exchanges and they were really peppering his Indonesian defense and trying to ask questions of them especially with the aerial duels what a clever touch from him. Charles Wando loses possession of the ball. Yanis has got every right to look at the referee and say, hey, hang on, the ball stuck under his feet. I've had every right and every reason to go after that. So what a touch that one was by Safawi, though, to get himself out of that dangerous position. And almost a no hope, no a lost cause turned into something positive just with one clever flick of the boot. Five minutes remaining. This will be a good time to score for the Malaysians. 
Joffrey Chu trying to scramble his way inside the penalty box. Failed to do so. The Indonesians come away with it with Yanis Aroni. Ezra Walian on the outside. Septian turns and then... Oh, that's a brilliant ball put through. Walian is through on goal finally. Declines to take the shot the first time. And the challenge comes in in the end by Adam Noazlin who says, not in my house, but I tell you what, his house was almost penetrated and blown down. Thanks to the cunning of Septian and Ezra Walian. The confidence not high enough from Ezra Walian because the shot had to be taken much earlier. He failed to pull the trigger. Indonesians get a corner out of it, but it could have been so much better if he had just taken that snapshot at goal. Just his first real sniff at goal. Couldn't take advantage though. Not enough Indonesians in the box, uh, at least outside the six-yard box. They were cleverly boxed out by the Malaysian defense. And that's when zonal marking actually works. Preventing those uh, strikers from going through and getting past their ranks and attacking that six-yard box. But, uh, it wasn't helped as well. The Indonesians didn't help their own cause by actually putting players on the edge of the penalty box instead of having a couple of them just playing just in front of the six-yard box and maybe even in front of the goalkeeper footwork was masterful that time from Safawi Shamir loses a challenge even Dimas comes away with the ball here is Walian Ezra Walian had to hold it up needed support found it well, they tried to just spear the ball right through for Walian Pani Shabandi that time Walian back to Hanif even Dimas, industrious, nippy, central midfielder. At least they're ending the half strong, the Indonesians. Yabes Roni, back to Hanif. And here is uh, Rizaldi, you say very lucky to still be on the pitch for some, for that uh, horrendous challenge. Behind the defense, a takedown was almost good enough from the Ajax youth product, Ezra Walian. Well, you can see throughout this tournament that uh, it has been a little rusty. That's uh, what happens when you are unaffiliated and you don't have a football club. I remember Ezra Walian actually playing in a tournament in Singapore the juniors tournament called the Lion City Cup and uh, he was uh, a player for Ajax then when they won the tournament finished top scorer in that tournament and he was just different class when it comes to center forward play because he used to hold the ball up so very well the coach of Ajax then told me that he models his game after a certain Ruud van Nistelrooy and he played like Ruud van Nistelrooy in that tournament the spring that he had in his step it's just missing in the C games Brought up in Holland, of course, Ezra Walian. He's got an Indonesian parentage and now a full-time Indonesian international. Septian. Strength coming to the fore for Septian. Ricky. Happy to use Hanif as much as possible. Usually steps into that central midfield zone to join this man on the ball, even Dimas. Whenever Indonesia are on the front foot reason why we haven't called this game a lot yet is because they've hardly been on the front foot in this game. So just crawling into half time. We use that term because uh, the intensity level has certainly dropped to where these two teams, especially from Malaysia, the start that they had. Shamir has been the story of the last two minutes uh, the passes which were crisp and the opening exchanges are just not finding the teammates now remember they have a new striker on the pitch too Jeffrey Chu although of similar ilk to Kumaran Kumaran actually does like to come back a little bit and make use of his pace to receive the ball deeper whereas Jaffrey actually looks to 
start deep and then try to move forward behind the defensive line. Two extra minutes, a lot of it given for the treatment to Kumar and after it went tumbling down from that horrendous challenge. Playing a little closer to Tanabalan and Kumaran did his time on the field. And maybe that's the reason why the channels are open up, but two forwards are just way too close to one another. And so there isn't that option of having someone run into it. Passes have been going astray that time. Safawi, who's just uh, momentarily switched to, to the right-hand side to allow Jaffrey to link up with Tanabalan. Had his boots a little too high. Dangerous play on uh, Ricky Fadrin. Storming first half it has been by Safawi. Whenever he's had an opportunity to do magic on the ball, he has weaved that uh, one of his with that left foot. I said the most cultured left foot in the tournament. But they finally have time to abandon his right full back position and move forward. Players in the box waiting for the cross. The delivery is pretty poor though. That's for the first time in the match. We see the marauding fullback, the marauding win back in Usu Gadei. No fun was always watching. Yeah, wanted to hit it that low. It had to be hit behind the defense and not. To in front of the defense, I should say, just in front of the goalkeeper, out behind it at the edge of the penalty box because no one was there. So it's a first half uh, where Malaysia rode a real wave of emotion in the opening 10 minutes and attacked the Indonesian goal. They couldn't find a way through. Tanabalan missed an opportunity right in front of goal. And then Jafri Chu came on for the very unfortunate Kumaran, had the best opportunity of the first half, right in front of goal, volleyed it straight, and it produced a stunning save from Sachi Tamar. Chances have been few and far between in terms of uh, the Indonesians. It's whatever they've done, they have actually been hitting the target. The best chance perhaps going to Febri Hariadi, whose shot was stole by the goalkeeper. And Ezra Walian, after being put through at the end of the first half, just didn't have the confidence to pull the trigger. Nil-nil at the half. Indonesia, Malaysia. We're still not too sure as to who will meet the defending champions, Thailand, in the final in the second semis. Shah Alam Stadium has been a real furnace and it has been a real din of noise this Saturday evening cheering on the boys in white against the Indonesians who came into this fixture trepidation as you can imagine not just the crowd they have to deal with but a Malaysian side who took the only 100% record into the final four. Well they came out firing on all cylinders they just couldn't find a way to go in the first half. Fixtures between Malaysia and Indonesia in the SEA Games have been low scoring affairs at under 23 level this one looks to be heading that way as I said don't be surprised if there's extra time on the cards Indonesia have played more games in the sea games that have gone into extra time than any other country Azam 
need some semblance now of domination on the ball the same way they did at the start of that first half Indonesians have kept themselves very tight defensively and well organized somehow as a part to say they needed to keep the ball a lot longer Azam just takes one smack from about 30 yards off which was never going to trouble the goalkeeper at all but so the Malaysians were at their best in the first half and they were keeping the ball and stretching this Indonesian defense before sending those crosses in for the likes of Tanabalan to feast on and they need to continue their trend because it was a messy end to that first half for them and players were a little too close to one another instead of pulling themselves wide out Jaffrey Chu is a much better striker than that striker would tell you Indonesians will take heart that uh, against the Malaysians at the recent under 23 AFC qualifiers they were 3 0 down after the only 30 minutes and here after 46 it's still goalless Spanish coach of course for the Indonesians Luis Miller coach that has coached the Spanish under 21 side at the 2011 Euros and what a side it was as well Imagine the Indonesian coach now at the Sea Games he used to be coaching the likes of Juan Mata, Cesar Espilicueta, David De Gea, and Gang. Safawi, clever for the first time and then got too clever for himself. Kim Sui has stressed throughout this tournament that his team has to take better care of the ball. I think that uh, he might have said that at halftime too. The work, especially of a uh, central midfielder, Shamir, would go to waste if they just give the ball away too easily. Ezran gets the fortunate deflection to get it out wide to the very quick February. He tries to take on Matthew Davies one on one, but this time Tanabalan does come back to help out. A little hop and skip, wonderful work in by February. This time though, he showed Davies the way and he was happy enough to marshal him out. But as I said, when it comes to the footwork and time on the ground, Davies is going to be a losing cause. Shazwan, Malaysia, happy enough that he was there. Because there was a little break on as Azam tries to come away with the ball, loses it in midfield. Shamir Kutiaba, this time couldn't get anywhere close to the ball and the Indonesians will put it out for one of their players to receive treatment. That is the leading scorer in this tournament, Septian Maulana. Well, February Arjadi has just been giving Matthew Davies daymares at the moment. Because every time he stepped on the ball, so we have a look at Septian being clipped by Adip. So Davies doesn't really have that same protection at the, at the back with Adip Zainuddin, both of them not known for really turning on the afterburners and the pace and so whenever February goes into this turbo charge and engages that the Malaysians are always susceptible to the pacey attacks from the Indonesians it's almost like a snap of the fingers they just burst straight out at you you just have to be careful and attentive always a sight when the Malaysians play Indonesia in Southeast Asia level whether it's the sea games of which he's been a part of for four times already all the ASEAN football championships the Suzuki Cup as some people like to call that minutes played of the second half and you'd have to say Indonesia have started the second half a lot better because Malaysia have been very messy with possession 
has been giving the ball away way too easily. And whatever Onkim Sweer said at half time hasn't been really heated in terms of keeping ball. It's one thing being direct, it's another thing being direct with the off the ball running and the fluidity. So if you're direct and just hitting it long, no one's up there to support the likes of Tanabalan. No one's going to win the second ball. Then it's a uh, really not going to be working in your favour against an Indonesian side that have packed their defence and ensure there's always protection in front of them. The likes of uh, even Dimas and Septian Maulana, who's playing a much deeper role today than he did in the group stages. That's the reason why Ezra Walian has really been reduced to isolation up front. I'll be almost allowing the ball to run underneath him, hoping for support from the centre-back. But uh, he's never going to find it as Matthew Davies comes out to take the throw for Malaysia. Only once have we seen him put across, and that's really a compliment more than anything else. Tanabalan managing to wriggle free. First time of asking, not the second time though, because there was cover. Azam. Adib. Shamir. Steps into space, Shamir, not known for his goal-scoring exploits, but he decided to take that snapshot at goal. After once again winning the battle in midfield, every time there is a one-on-one -on -one situation, Shamir Kutiaba has been coming out on top. Two number six battle with uh, Safawi fouling, even two number six are perhaps uh, the creative linchpins of this uh, of these two sides even and Safawi even's been very tidy but because of the lack of support and movement in front of him so always been forced to go sideways more than forward Safawi whenever he's had the opportunity to deliver any sort of a cross inside the penalty box has been deadly Adam Aslin giving the ball away cheaply. Septian, Ezra Walian just ahead of him. Septian steps inside. Here is Ivan finally in an offensive front. Ezra Walian. Ball came off him last. Ball kick Malaysia. Watchful defending again by Adam Norslin. It's a brilliant movement, especially from Yabez Roni to run right across. And everybody was watching him so that even Dimas could use him as a decoy and put it outside for Walian. So the confidence just missing in this Dutch-born Indonesian Ezra Walian at the moment. You can see it's just sapping away from him. He scored one goal in this tournament against Cambodia, but in the rest of the matches, it's almost looked like a passenger who's uh, hoping for confidence to seep into the body as the match progresses. It is a very fragile commodity, isn't it? Confidence, especially if you're a centre forward. And for Ezra Walian, that is something that uh, he would purchase now at any given price. Jaffrey Chu using the extra bit of acceleration to get past Andy Setio. Thought he won the ball cleanly. The referees decided to give the free kick. There you go, it was a very good tackle, a very good tackle. That's a wrong decision by the referee. Strange that Irfan Zakaria has come up to take this. He is uh, one of those three centre-backs that are above 1.8 metres and can really hurt a team with the aerial bombardment. Zakaria, poor free kick, very poor. If you have uh, four players in the penalty box at 1.8 meters against a side that's really unsure and comes to defending set pieces, you need it to lift it high enough. Even Dimas running into traffic. But the Malaysians come away with it with Matthew Davies. As I said, we haven't seen him much in an adventurous front. And that is probably one of the worst balls he's played in this tournament. Septian, speaking of horrible balls, that's another one which gave Dimas no chance at all. Rehaldi managing to keep it in play. Still Rizaldi. Tanabalan happy to give up the chase as long as it's inside the Indonesian defensive third.
Septien. He's bouncing away from traffic, making sure that uh, he's got space, but he couldn't turn and go forward. Here is Ezra Wadian. Still Wadian, center forward, dragged wide. He had to run outside of Febri, but it didn't choose to use him instead going inside to so even Demas. Too feeble an effort to trouble the goalkeeper. It'll take a catastrophic mistake from the Malaysian goalkeeper if uh, that were to be the opening goal. But much better now from Malaysia in the last three minutes after seeding possession way too easily in every given opportunity when they had ball in the opening stages of the second half at least they're keeping it much better now Shamir has been a real star in this match Tanabalan uses the run of Davies well, it's, uh, almost a nothing cross uh, it's uh, Safawi tried to make something off at the far post Matthew Davies is usually a much better defender much better fullback in terms of delivering the crosses than he has been in this match if you're watching him for the first time you might be thinking this right wing back is overrated defensively he's always caught out with uh, February and his pace and moving forward he doesn't offer much but uh, I can tell you that the 2015 Malaysian young player of the year is not quite the delivery just as he did then in finding that pass forward Tanabalan happy to take the challenge and contact and go down. Free kick Malaysia. After a very pensive start to this second half, slowly building some momentum now on the back of the Malaysian fans who haven't stopped making as much noise as possible to make this a frosty, intimidating atmosphere for the Indonesian team. Septian's gone down injured, that's not a very good sign. Indonesian top scorer. He's asked to be substituted. Well, in this tournament where matches happen almost every other day, sometimes it does take its toll on the players. It's, uh, Pretty familiar sight at the Sea Games to see a lot of players having their muscles give up on them in the course of the tournament, especially if they go deep into that tournament as the Indonesians have done here in qualifying for the semi-finals. And now they might lose their top scorer Septien. Dima's already signaled to the bench that a substitution is needed, so one of their substitutes have come up and uh, is ready to come on as Malaysia get ready to take a free kick. As I said, the coach has stressed, make use of these set pieces, of which some corners have been okay. And the set pieces, especially those taken by Safawi, have just gone straight at goal. That one was almost a cross slash shot, hoping for someone to profit at the end of it. He does have some thunder behind those shots of his. And the goalkeeper filled that one well. Played well so far, Satria Tama. If they're going to get uh, right back into this, you do feel that uh, Safari Rasid has got an important part to play. And the Indonesians allow him too much freedom in the first half. Sadil Ramdani has already scored a goal in this tournament, getting ready to come on for Indonesia. Like for like replacement for Septian. player who scored two goals at the AFC qualification recently so he's got goals in him Tanabalan certainly does top scorer of the under 23s this year and Tanabalan so already plundered eight goals in 2017 for the under 23 side and their top scorer of these games three goals in one and a half matches not a bad return at all and whose head they look for the route to the opening goal after the hour mark 
Another brilliant delivery yet again. The Malaysians hunting for it. This time they get free of their markers. But too many bodies inside the box. So going after the same ball and the Indonesians escape despite some shoddy defending. They all jumped together but they had their eyes closed and weren't looking at the flight of the ball. The Indonesians or the Malaysians were. Two players just getting into each other's way more than anything else. Have a look at the corner once again. There we go. The Indonesians, a bunch of them just looking at the bodies and not really the flight of the ball. Looking away. Matthew Davies was right there just behind Tanabalan. They always look for Tanabalan inside those situations. And uh, what they usually do is to get their defenders up like uh, Irfan Zakaria. And Adam No Aslin has already got one goal in this tournament against Brunei. They're right up there serving his bodies to plant themselves down to take away a defender so that uh, Tanabalan has got the freedom inside the penalty box to poach. He almost did then with uh, Adib and Adam taking away a couple of defenders and the ball almost looping kindly into the path of Tanabalan. Dimas always looking to get uh, the movement and the fluidity going for the Indonesians. Clever ball played out outside to Yabes Roni, whom we haven't seen much of in terms of his pace. Now he turns it on, decides to take the shot from long distance. Well, it looked as if it came off Yabes. And uh, it is uh, the correct decision for the goal kick for Malaysia. But it really was the first time in this match where Yabez was given time to run at the defense. Too often in this game, the ball's given to him and he's got to turn. The moment he does, there's always a defender right in front of him. And even at that opportunity, he actually made his own space by flicking the ball into its path. Onside for Indonesia. Walian once again though, dragged wide. Pepri just behind him. Febri's just been running menacingly at Matthew Davies and gang. Fullback was not a bad one. Even Dimas looking for the angle for the shot. He does get it through. But it was always going wide and the angle was always going to be acute. But that certainly was an opportunity for Indonesia. Once again, the path to goal came from Febri Haryati down the left-hand side. Even Dimas showed more appetite and hunger to get to the ball ahead of the Malaysian just ran himself into a tight angle before he pulled the trigger and maybe just maybe that first touch it took him a little further than he would have liked central zone that one would have just gone on target at least and made the goalkeeper work a lot harder than he did then Davies took it in his stride brilliantly, wins the corner. What a take that one was from Matthew Davies. But yet again, when it comes to the sprints, Febri is there ahead of you. It's not just Davies, but a lot of fullbacks in this tournament have failed to live with his pace. Malaysians somehow got to lift themselves up for the final stages of this match. Jaffrey Chu lurking and almost scoring. Poor defending yet again. That time it was Andy Setio. Man marking and then allowing his opponent to escape way too easily instead of following him and jumping with him. Yet again, the delivery was just sublime, wasn't it? That time it came from uh, Safawi. Every time he puts foot on the ball and decides to put it inside the mix of the penalty box, there's always going to be danger. That you can be assured of. Hanif uh, winning a couple of headers. Uh, before releasing Evan Dimas, who's got himself a lot more involved in the second half in the offensive sense than he did in the first half. Shamir 
bullied off the ball unfairly, says the referee was only a yard away from that action. So great positioning there from the Sri Lankan official. And we saw that happening from Hanif Shabandi. 25 minutes remaining, still goalless in this match. It took a very, very late goal from Thailand to put their place in the final. Is this going the same way? Ezra Walian has broken the offside trap. Still Ezra Walian through on goal. Steps inside once. Clever footwork. Well, they wanted the ball released to him. And his teammates screaming at him at the moment. That is Sadil. Because he thought the ball should have been passed on to him. But uh, to be fair to Ezra Walian, after stepping inside the first challenge, had the ball stuck under his foot. There we go. That was that situation where he could have pulled the pass off to Sadil. But the ball was stuck under his foot. He tried to get it off and couldn't. Not in time. And perhaps just that little bit of a nick from Aram Noaz that made all the difference. Well, Azra Walian, in a more confident sense, might have taken that shot first time. You could see where that dink was for. A couple of players at the far post, including Tanabalan, was waiting for a ball to be floated up in the air for them to attack. Tanabalan kept it alive, sets himself up nicely for the volley. Was always going over though. For Jaffrey Chu. This was a delicate first touch. And sometimes in the heat of the moment, you can't get yourself over the ball. And that time the defending wasn't too clever either. He didn't come forward and try to block out that shot. He just stood there and almost invited Jaffrey Chu to take it as if telling him. I don't believe you have the ability or the now to score that sort of ball. Jaffrey Chu, if he had just allowed the ball to come down a lot later, he might have been able to get that one on target. Game heading towards extra minutes, an extra period of play. For the last seven meetings, only one goal have separated these sides at the SEA Games and you do feel that one goal will be good enough for the semi-final. Shamir, Matthew Davies takes the contact, Shamir back to Davies. This time decides to cross with his left. Looked a much better cross than his favorite right throughout this match. Goalkeeper was brave, Satria has done nothing wrong at all today. And Davies almost allowing Fabri to sneak away from him as he has done throughout this match at that time a much better intervention when it comes to the quickness of feet in this tournament no one has been quicker than Safawi Rasid clever turn of pace and direction from Safawi getting away from danger so very quickly this boy is a real player much better cross with that left foot than what we've seen in terms of the deliveries in this match from Davies that one was always favoring the goalkeeper, Satria Tama. Well, after missing that uh, cross in the opening game against Thailand, he has been much uh, more assured when he has come to those crosses. Jaffrey Chu just slightly wide. It's, it's a couple of chances already for Jaffrey Chu in this match. One at the near post from the last corner. And one which, uh, once again, nobody jumped with him. They just stood there and it was too static at the back for the Indonesians. Ball watching, player watching. And there was not a single challenge on Jaffrey Chu. Might and should have at least put that one on target. still searching for that path and passage to the final and what would be their 70th win at the SEA Games Ezra Walian's miserable night comes to an end 
had that one chance at goal where you went right through didn't take that chance had another opportunity where he couldn't get the ball off his feet and that was just about it for what has been a very quiet night for the number 10 Osvaldo Hai, who plays in Persipura, Jayapura, comes on. We're into the final 19 minutes. 19 nervous minutes for both sets of supporters and for Lewis Miller and Ong Kim Sui on the bench their hearts certainly beating like a speed metal song at the moment because it's at that stage where you feel as if one goal would surely be enough to settle this now Osvaldo's first touch is a good one as he escapes the clutches and probably is going to win the free kick. The referee does call it back. Good work from the referee. The crowd don't appreciate that. But when you look at what was happening, you certainly do because he thought the Indonesians had that advantage. And then when he realized he didn't, he decided to call it right back. But it's a very clever first touch then from Osvaldo. Much different player from Ezra Walian who will be the stem up front and make sure that he keeps the center backs honest throughout the match as well as someone who likes to peel away from it almost playing like a false nine and helping out the midfield before it's moving forward and allowing the channels to open up for the likes of Yames Robbie to just uh, latch on to those loose balls behind so with Ezra Walian coming out they've taken out a center forward in a typical Spanish boss isn't it Luis Mia now playing almost with a false nine Osvaldo Iñabes taking turns down the flanks along with Febri to play that center forwards position for the moment it will be Yabes who's right up there all by himself Adip Zainuddin it's hardly broken sweat in this match that's how comfortable Malaysia have been defensively although having said that every time he's had to break sweat and stretch a sinew of muscle always been on a desperate cause trying to chase down February Hariadi Adam Jaffrey Chu clever first touch from him not so the pass though just messed up all his very good work this take was brilliant. That pass was not. Goalkeeper has gone down three times in this game already, clutching that same hamstring. And he usually gets up and turns to the crowd to get their noise levels up. He can't do this in the second half because behind him, a band of Malaysian supporters. 15 minutes remaining. The Malaysian fans still chant with hopes that they are the team to go to the final and meet the defending champions, Thailand. Indonesia have been quieter despite the fact that it has been a better second half for them, especially in the opening few minutes of it. Hong Kim Sui needs that midfield to start dominating again. It has in the last 10 minutes, but uh, for the first 15 minutes of the second half, they're allowing the Indonesians to break at will. And a lot of it's down to the fact as well that Shamer Kutiaba is playing in a deeper role in the first half. Has just moved a little more advanced a position to join up with the attackers. seen him actually just outside the penalty box on a couple of occasions in this match the goalkeeper decides not to take those goal kicks now that he's feeling it in the hamstrings Gabez Roby shows that he can be quite a handful in the air as well the ball's pumped up despite his slight 1.68 meter frame 
here is Shamir. One touch and into space with consumer tease. Jaffrey Chu doing his work down the channels once again. that uh, Ong Kim Sui sometimes does not appreciate. You can see from the bench he's gesturing and saying, hey look, we've set this formation up to play with wing back so that we can use the flanks as much as possible. So try to take advantage of it and make use of them. They've done it in going 100% from the group stages. But as I said, it's different playing against the likes of Singapore, Laos and Brunei. And maybe even Myanmar will allow you that uh, freedom of the flanks as opposed to playing against Indonesia who've got such speedy wingers who can be deployed at well at the back Jaffrey Chu does superbly to make something of almost a lost cause Jaffrey couldn't clip the ball inside to Safawi oh the ball's given away that's a dive if it is it should be a yellow card Malaysia though with the ball back Tanabalan still Tanabalan Chance is still alive and he sets it up for the rifle of a shot which takes a deflection, it's a corner. Shamir Kutiaba who took that final effort but hopes went up and everybody stood up because whenever Tanabala has touched the ball in this tournament the net bulges. That time though the touch took him too far away from goal, he tried to set it up for Shamir not a true blue striker but I think he was happy enough with the strike to think that might trouble the goalkeeper it's gone out for a corner the noise levels are raised because the players have raised their game at least the home side have raised theirs a couple of levels in the last 10 minutes goalkeeper has spilled it referee says though it's a foul on him to take as long as possible yet again a ball floated for Tanabalan he is such a clever center forward isn't it always so very cognizant of the space in front of him around him not just of uh, the opponents but of his fellow defenders too so wherever his fellow defenders are running to and taking the opponents out he usually finds that pocket of space inside there and that's the reason why he scored a truckload of goals from his head from corner situations he just manages to find that extra space in the penalty box real poachers instinct isn't it out and out striker right place right time sometimes it's easier to say that and put it right down to luck than it is to be in that situation because you need to know what the right space and right time is and a lot of times you have to make that space yourself even Dimas continues chasing always brings a lot of energy to this Indonesian side and sometimes brings fear into the opposition who will give the ball and throw it away just like that Shazwan Ishak the guilty party into the final 10 minutes Indonesia, well, it says on the stats here, with more possession than the Malaysians, at least in the second half, that might be true, but a lot of it's just been on the counter-attack. Sadil forced to go backwards. Andy Setio. Gade searching for Yabes. Osvaldo. Yabez wants the ball played short. Osvaldo, see what he was trying to do is uh, hoping for Fabri to make his way inside and gamble on that. Fabri didn't and apologizes to Osvaldo. There we go. He saw the run of Fabri who then checked at the wrong time. The last couple of meetings in the Sea Games has always been a goal scored in the last 10 minutes between Indonesia and Malaysia. 
Is that trend going to continue? Is it going to continue now? Needed a much better touch from Fabri. This time he does continue his run. And all night long, whenever he's just put smoke behind him and sparks behind his heels, the Malaysians have failed to deal with it. That time he almost punished them. It needed a purer touch in the penalty box. He couldn't provide it. And in those situations, sometimes, even if you can't take the ball down in your stride, just try to poke it past the goalkeeper. He didn't do either. Azam Davies just behind Tanabalan. Even his square passes are not coming up tonight, Matthew Davies. Even Demas. How industrious he has been and how combative in the middle of the park. There he is again. What a different class of player he is, even Demas. Just watching him and Safawi do their thing in the semi-final has already been a treat for the fans. Dimas has got some space and wants the ball. Instead it goes all the way wide to Rizaldi. Indonesians happy to just slow the pace down a little bit because they know the Malaysians have had a little domination in midfield. And once again, Firhan. Febri almost finding a way through this Malaysian defense, combining with the other speeds of Yabez, Osvaldo. Yabez, oh, he needed to flick the ball to Osvaldo. He did take the shot in the end, but if he had the, just the savoir faire and the ability then to just flick the ball up, there we go. That's a little flick behind the defense. Maybe he didn't have that in his locker. But if he did, despite the crowd of three in front of him, would have set Osvaldo free because it was a very clever run from Osvaldo. It wasn't direct. He ran sideways to keep himself on side before bursting through. That was the opportunity for Indonesia. Adib. Davies finding no way around yet again another loose ball from him he's had one of his more forgettable matches Matthew Davies youngest ever captain of the Pahang side well the two Pahang players both him and Azam haven't really been affecting matters in this match the same way they did in the group stages No, Aslin happily just steps across. Did well enough to keep Ezra Walian in check. He's got a different proposition altogether now. Striker turned defender facing the likes of Yabes. And this time he uses his strength. Yabes somehow manages to get to the ball, but the referee says unfairly because he was charging on uh, Adam. It looks as if both players were doing it at the same time. Maybe Yabes. Uh, was trying that little drag back but uh, so too was Adam actually clutching onto his jersey Shamir trying to clip it onto the path of Davies who got lucky the Indonesians failed to keep possession of the ball Malaysia trying to up the ante and the pressure now. Somehow they just cannot ping the ball inside the penalty box. Shamir had the ball just picked from his pocket. And Indonesians with an opportunity to break. Once again, the clever running of February. Oh, took too long on the ball, Yabes. Took way too long on the ball. And the whole impetus of that attack was completely lost. Had to pull the ball right back to even Dimas as soon as he got it because Dimas had all the space in the world to look, operate, and pick a pass to two flankers who had been running and penetrating this Malaysian defense. 
in their search for that goal, the go-ahead goal. Malaysians might just leave gaps at the back for them to exploit. Jaffrey Chu, still Jaffrey Chu, wins the corner. Couldn't cross it, there wasn't anyone inside the penalty box. Because of that, he couldn't drag it back either because there was a defender in front of him. So he does the next best thing. Get them that set-piece situation which the coach has said. The Indonesians are not comfortable dealing with balls in the air. A route to goal, always from the dead ball situation. It's Azam Azi to take the latest corner. Tanabalan, goal! Eruption! Euphoria! The home side are in the lead and it is through a dead ball situation as predicted by their coach on Kim Sui. The leading scorer of that tournament finds the Midas touch yet again with three minutes left to play and that header might have nodded Malaysia into the finals of the SEA Games for the first time since they won this in 2011. And Tanabalan. Well, we did talk about it earlier on, his ability to find space in the box, to mask himself from a fellow defender or teammates inside the penalty box. Just that uncanny ability to always find room. He did find room to devastating effect and the Indonesians now have to claw back from a deficit. After having matched the Malaysians stride for stride in the second half, they cannot do that in their counter-attacking policy. They have to go for broke now. And they only have three minutes plus whatever time the referee is going to add on. And there might be a lot of time with injuries to the goalkeepers. The latest being Hazik Nazli of Malaysia, who's gone down clutching that same old hamstring too. So perhaps a little bit of gamesmanship from the Malaysian goalkeeper. A little back at you sign for what uh, Satria Tama, the Indonesian goalkeeper, has done. Well, the Indonesians abandon the far post then they had a marker on the near post but not the far post and it was right there that Tanabalan has illuminated this crowd with a firefly of a goal and Tanabalan now you know why they were sweating over his fitness and now you know why Beads of sweat came down the brows of the Malaysian coaching staff when he went down with an injury in training. And they had their prayers answered when the MRI scans came back and said it wasn't serious enough of an injury for him to miss the tournaments, although he might have missed the first match. Well, he did miss the first match against Myanmar. And then was fit enough only to start on the bench against Singapore. They were trading by a goal to nil. He came on and he scored the winning goal in that game. And then against Myanmar, two goals against them, the first and the third, which really got them top placing in the group. And a semi-final meeting with a second place team in Group B, which happened to be the Indonesians. And time and time again in this match already, during set pieces the Indonesians just cannot deal with what the Malaysians have thrown at them a lot of it's down to the delivery the service and I believe there will be five added minutes at the end of this match that delivery was delicious yet again and it came from Azar no Azam Azit 
Indonesians have won a corner themselves. What can they do with this? Um, the runner is on, and it was a header that was thumped, but way over the bar. And the Malaysians will take some time, Shamir, to eat this up. It was Tanab Allen, actually the goal scorer. This time, putting enough uh, of a resistance to ensure that the t header went off target. So he'll wake up tomorrow to find himself the hero of the Malaysian Sea Games campaign. As coach Ong Kim Sui has said, you can win gold in everything. But this is the goal that every team wants. Magnificent. And we use his teammate as a decoy. That time it was Safawi and found some space just behind him. Almost pushing off his teammate. And then peeling away to find room behind the defense and find just that pocket of space where he will be unmarked. Malaysia make their change. It will be Shami Safari who comes on for Tanabalan, the defensive midfielder for their striker in chief. Well, that decision might come back and haunt on Kim Sui if the Indonesians actually find an equalizer here in injury time. Remember the tie scored as late as the 94th minute, so it's not over yet. Tanabalan doesn't even know that he's been substituted. He almost wanted to go and return back onto the pitch. Now he knows. And he'll just soak in the cheers from the fans now as he walks trackside. He is a national hero. And Tanabalan. And he's given Malaysia a sniff and an opportunity. Not just to continue with this 100% run but more importantly for the gold medal and they've won another corner this time maybe not as many players committed up front as the last one which produced the only goal of the game Safawi Rasit is rested, as I said, on Kim Sui's now throwing all his defensive cards on the pitch just to protect this lead. But it might change in an instant. Oh. Except for 19. 65. Every time the games have been held in Kuala Lumpur, the Malaysian football team have managed to make the final. The last time in 2001, they met Thailand in the final and lost by a goal to nil. Thailand already in the final. Is this going to be a repeat of that 2001 final? That one, of course, remember, is the first time that football turn into an under 23 event for Shamir who will take as much uh, plaudits at the end of the match as uh, Tanabalan due to his uh, tigerish endeavors in the middle of the park he's won almost every challenge he's protected his defense and in the second half given a more adventurous forward role he's actually helped out his teammates around the penalty box in making sure that the metronome is always ticking when they move forward despite the fact that uh, they had a very quiet start in the second half another late late goal deciding matters between Malaysia and Indonesia only two countries have won the football goal since it's been turned into an under 23 tournament Thailand of course and on Kim Sui's Malaysia one of which was won by him in 2011 they won it consecutive games in 2009 and 2011 
Is there going to be a final chance for the Indonesians or is this game over now? They've got to lump it up. They can't be playing around. Well, they have a chance to lump it up. It's unnecessarily given away by the Malaysians. The last thing you want to do is to make sure that they have the ball on the ground because there's an opportunity for them to get it airborne. Indonesians taking their time though. There is space in midfield. It's got to weave away from it. There's a chance inside the penalty box. Is that a penalty? Is that a penalty? Well, he put his hands up straight away. And usually when a defender does that, that's usually contact on the striker. Osvaldo screaming at the referee because he wants that penalty. But it will take a very, very brave official to be given the penalty in the very last minute of play in front of the Malaysian crowd. Can't see enough of it, but usually when a defender throws his hand up like that, there must be some sort of contact. No penalty given. And the Indonesians do pay the penalty of failing to defend set pieces. It was from a corner that Malaysia scored. And N. Tanabalan has sent the Shah Alam into raptures. Because Malaysia have booked their place in the football final against Thailand. The only two teams that have won the football at the SEA Games at under 23 level will be the two teams that will play in the final in 2017. Yet again a late goal for Malaysia against Indonesia. They're still unbeaten against the Indonesians at under 23 level at the SEA Games. And they carry their 100% record into the final with a 1-0 victory thanks to a planted header by the wily N. Tanabalan. Final score from the Shah Alam Stadium in semi-final number two, Malaysia 1, Indonesia 0.